Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. I have another raw feeding video for you today. I'm super excited about this one. This is a beginner's guide to raw feeding for ferrets. So I'm gonna break it down for you, make it nice and simple to understand. Patsu is very sleepy, so he will accompany me as long as he can tolerate laying here. <laughs> feeding raw can appear intimidating at first before you really look into it and break it down. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain everything to you, make it nice and simple, for you to understand and hopefully you will consider transitioning your ferrets onto a healthier diet like raw. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is decide on which form of raw you want to follow. There are a couple different versions that you can do. Each have their own benefits. So you have freeze-dried or air-dried raw, you have commercial grinds, you have franken-prey, and then whole prey. These are what is available to you and what you can choose from. Freeze-drying is a method where all the moisture is removed from a product although it still preserves its nutritional value of the meat. This process also lightens the meat significantly and it can be fed either dry or wet. However, most people do wet because when fed dry, it has the same negative effect that kibble does in which in the digestive system, it will absorb a lot of the moisture that a ferret has in there, dehydrating them very easily. Dry, freeze-dried food is very dehydrating as is kibble. So that's why many people choose to to wetten the food up. And a big con of freeze-dried diets is that they are the most expensive route when it comes to feeding raw. And although it's very convenient to feed, it's sort of like kibble in that you can just take it out of the, the bag that it's in. It is very expensive to feed this food. That's why a lot of people don't choose this route. Also something to add with freeze-dried and air-dried food, which is a similar concept, more bone will most likely need to be added to the food because ferrets benefit more from larger pieces of bone than over the smaller pieces that are found in freeze-dried raw diets or uh, some don't even contain bone at all. Next up we have commercial grinds. You have both complete and incomplete commercial grinds. Complete grinds can be fed alone as it's completely balanced. Each meal has everything that a ferret needs throughout the week in that one meal. So you're supposed to feed that every day for every meal. Incomplete grinds are more for people who feed Frank and Prey style raw just to supplement. Sometimes they only have like organs, whatever it is. It's not balanced so those should only be used for supplemental feeding only. Now balanced grinds are awesome because they're super convenient. Keep in mind that ferrets again benefit from larger pieces of bone. It's a good idea to add bones into the diet throughout the week to help keep their teeth clean. Frank and prey is the next form of raw, and that is when you utilize different parts of different animals throughout the week to create a balanced meal plan. So instead of having a balanced meal in each sitting, you work on it throughout the week to create a balanced meal plan uh, throughout that time period. This is a very popular route and the most cost efficient out of all of the methods. So this is a very good choice for those of you that are on a budget. This is what I was doing for the longest time. Now you do have more responsibility with this route. You have to ensure that your meal plan is balanced first before you start any of your ferrets. You have to make sure that they eat each ingredient that you are giving them. You have to make sure they eat the proper amounts of certain parts of the diet or else it will not be balanced. Lastly, we have whole prey, and whole prey is considered to be the best method for your ferrets. It is the closest to what they would naturally eat in the wild, although it is the most expensive route after freeze-dried raw. Even just implementing small amounts of whole prey in addition to a different method of raw feeding, that is great as well. Some examples of whole prey items include whole mice, whole chicks, rabbit, quail, any whole animal, and they can eat the fur and feathers as well. 
Now we will be discussing providing a balance for your ferret, which is incredibly important. A rye diet will not be beneficial or healthy for your ferret if it is not balanced. So regardless of the method that you choose that we talked about, it has to be balanced for your ferret, whether that is throughout the whole week or just in one sitting. So they need all of these items that I will be listing here in order for it to be considered balanced. They need 10% of the diet to be bone-in meat and then 70% of boneless meat, 10% of heart, 5% liver, and then 5% other secreting organ, for example, brain, thymus, kidney. For frank and prey, you really have to make sure that you are feeding these exactly because unlike with whole prey or grinds, everything is already done for you. Everything's already portioned and balanced and whatnot. But in frank and prey, it's up to you to make sure that you are doing the right thing. So that is why I will be linking below a perfect meal plan that you can follow to a T and you will experience zero problems because it has been made for you. Many people follow this meal plan and have had much success. Additionally, no matter what route you take, you must be providing variety as well as a balance. So it is recommended to do at least three to four different proteins, but more is better. Make sure that at least one of them is from a red meat source. Any meat is fair game. If you have obtained hunted meat, just make sure that you freeze it for a couple weeks prior to serving. Just avoid any meats from other carnivorous animals. Also avoid any meats that have been processed, seasoned, or preserved in any way. Next section, we have supplementing a raw diet and what you can add to a diet to make it more beneficial for your ferret. For ferrets and cats, some of which are obligate carnivores, there's not much that you can add to the diet during the week to make it any better than it already is. Some of which include one to two raw eggs per week per ferret. You can whisk the yolk and the whites together and feed that. You can also do one teaspoon of salmon oil per ferret per week, ideally stretched throughout the week, so not just in one sitting. You can also do freeze-dried meat items as treats and air-dried meat or dehydrated meat as well. That is fine. Now you have decided to feed a raw diet and the next step is to actually put all of your research, all of your knowledge into play by actually transitioning your kibble-fed ferret to raw. There are a couple steps that you can do. Keep in mind all ferrets are different. All ferrets are going to take different lengths of time to switch and whatnot. But the first thing that you should do before anything else is to actually offer them straight meat because there have been times where ferrets will just automatically eat the meat no transitioning needed so on the chance that your ferret does not want to eat it that's perfectly fine do not feel defeated whatsoever that's actually it's more normal for a ferret not to want anything to do with the meat that you have in front of them. Now, if you will be following freeze-dried raw exclusively as your meals for them, follow the normal kibble transitioning type steps. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is get them used to a wet diet. Ferrets have a very low thirst drive. In the wild, it is not their natural instinct to go to a stream of water and to drink from it. They get most of their water from the meat that they eat, the animals that they consume from. It's only natural that a raw diet would have a very very high moisture content, something that a kibble fed ferret would not be used to whatsoever. So what you're going to want to do is you can do one of two things. You can either blend up the kibble in a normal blender with some water, make it sort of like a paste, or you can simply put warm water into the kibble and let it soak for like 15 minutes before actually offering it to the ferret. Either one works, you can try both if one doesn't work. If your ferret will eat store-bought duck soup, I'll put the product um, here so you know what I'm I'm talking about you can offer that as well step two I always start with introducing chicken first that's just the easiest protein to one obtain and two for a ferret to usually take to immediately so I go out and I usually buy store-bought ground chicken or I just get chicken tenderloins and blend that up with warm water whatever I need to use to make a soupy consistency first I offer it on a spoon and then I use the dollop method as well so the dollop method is when you put some soup on your finger dab some on their nose and then at some point they have to lick it off. It's important to keep offering kibble during this time to ensure that they're receiving the nutrients that they need because a ferret cannot survive on just chicken and nothing else. So what I would usually do is leave out the kibble normal times, whatever time you put it out, and then throughout the day 
tr have them try the soup. You can have them try it and then put it in the fridge, take it out later, try it again then. Once they start willingly eating the soup every single time, that's when you can start phasing out the kibble. So the next step is to start adding slivers into the soup. So if you're doing chicken tenderloins, you can, it's easy to use scissors. Uh, I'll cut up little tiny, tiny slivers, like tinier than your pinky nail sized pieces of meat and they should take to it just fine and then gradually over the next couple meals you can increase the size of the chunks to where they are pretty significant bite-sized pieces. As you decrease the amount of soup and increase the amount of chunks you are going to want to start adding a calcium supplement because your ferrets are not eating bone yet so their stools are going to be very loose. So what you can do is you can either make your own eggshell powder. This is really simple to do. Just take some eggshells, dry them out for a few hours, take a mortar and pestle, whatever you use to crush things up at your house, and then just crush it up to a fine powder. You can also use a coffee grinder, whatever works. You can add a little bit of that into the food, or you can do human grade bone meal powder. So by this point, you can start adding different meats. You can start trying like beef, duck, rabbit, whatever you have available to you. If you will be following commercial grinds, this is also a great time to start doing that as well. If you find that they don't want to eat the bone pieces in the grinds, you can dilute it with some water to make it a little bit more palatable for them. If you're going to be following whole prey, start off with pinky mice at first, and then work your way up to larger mice and so on. For franken prey, introduce organs the same way as you did in the beginnings, making a soup, making the chunks bigger and bigger. Now, bones are going to be the trickiest thing to have your ferret eat along with certain organs like liver. Have your normal soup ready and then like the normal chicken or chicken and heart whatever you did and get a really nice sharp cleaver and then obtain some chicken wings some sort of light edible bone and then crush the bones up with the cleaver as small as you can and put a little bit into the soup see if they eat it and go from there. All right now how much are you supposed to feed per meal to make sure your ferret is getting enough food. The general rule of thumb is females usually eat around one to three ounces of food per day and males two to four. However, if you have younger ferrets, they might eat more than that. It all depends on the ferret. You, you can measure this by measuring the amount of food that you put out and how much is left behind. Just make sure that there is a little bit of food left behind each meal to make sure that all your ferrets had a chance to eating the food. I feed two meals a day, sometimes three. In the wild, a ferret can go a very long time without eating. They do not have 24-7 access to food, so it's perfectly fine to do just the two meals a day. Be sure to wash their food dishes and any utensils that you use after feeding because bacteria will linger and grow in the spots that raw meat has touched, of course. So you're going to want to make sure that you are cleaning that very, very well and you're also cleaning out stash spots. So with raw feeding usually comes stashing and you can control this by either feeding in their cage. This is what I do. I feed on the top level of the cage so they can't go very far when they're stashing. It's just usually in the cage so it's easy to clean and if you're feeding out of a cage it's a good idea to make your own safe stashing place uh, that could be like a cardboard box with a hole in it that they can go under they like to go any dark covered secluded area to keep their meat and to eat it if they are not eating it and many 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 hours are going by and it's still there then you can start removing it so the rule of thumb here for how long meat can be left out for soups it's six to eight hours grinds eight to twelve hours chunks ten to twenty four bone and meats 12 to 24 and whole prey up to 48 hours. So now onto what I personally feed if you would like to follow what I do. I feed whole prey balanced grinds from mypetcarnivore.com. I do the duck, chicken, rabbit, and beaver varieties. So it contains the entire animal ground up excluding the fur and the feathers and you can feed that so it's kind of a nice mix of whole prey and commercial grinds so you have the convenience of the grinds but you have the benefits of feeding whole prey that is what i personally do i also mix these with ground chicken feet from hairtoday.com because i like to add a little bit of extra bone and glucosamines in there for them because the grinds themselves sometimes do not have enough bone in them to keep their stools firm and whatnot so i add those i also 
also feed, sometimes feed a whisked whole egg once or twice a week. I'll also sometimes do a little bit of salmon oil if I'm feeling generous. They don't really love it all that much, but I have it, so might as well use it. I will also feed chicken necks and chicken wings throughout the week, maybe once or twice, just to keep up with their teeth. All right, so that is pretty much all that I have for you. I actually have a raw playlist on this channel, so a playlist of all of my raw videos that I recommend you watch. If you are really interested in feeding this diet, I have a video where I physically show you transitioning two kibble fed ferrets to raw and the process that came along with that so i have that video for you i also have a video of what i fed in a week when i was feeding frank and prey style raw also how i order meat online i also have a video of how i personally feed raw at the time and weighing the pros and cons the benefits of feeding raw and then i also have a video on comparing different commercial grind companies out there and what to watch out for when choosing one. So all of these videos would benefit a new raw feeding owner. Please, if you like this video and want to see more from me, do not forget to subscribe. A lot of you guys that like my content are not actually subscribed, so I would love to see you do that so you do not miss any of my future uploads because I do upload consistently now at least once a week, sometimes even twice. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye!